let's go look at the construction details of gas fill detectors. Usually these detectors are cylinders with an anode wire along the center line of the detector. The electrons are collected by the anode and the large gas ions migrate to the walls of the detector, the cathode, and they are neutralized there by the electrons turning, returning back through the electronics. If the voltage between the anode and the cathode is sufficiently high, then recombination is stopped and the electrons drift toward the anode wire having multiple collisions with gas molecules in the detector. These electrons reach the anode wire not all at the same time but over a course of a few milliseconds because of the random nature of how often they collided with gas molecules, how much energy was taken away during the collisions, where, the sens where in the sensitive volume each electron was created, and other factors. With the voltage set only to stop recombinations, the electrons collected are those created directly by the uh, interaction of the ionizing radiation with the detector or primary ionization. If we raise the voltage difference between the anode and the cathode, something interesting begins to happen. An electron, after being stopped by a collision with a gas molecule, can gain enough energy from the electric field between hits to cause an ionization the next time it hits a gas molecule, creating secondary ionization. This multiplication of electrons by secondary ionizations is called gas amplification. The primary and secondary ionization are generally indistinguishable, and what comes from the detector is just a larger pulse. This graph shows what happens to the detector signal as the voltage difference between the anode and the cathode is increased. With no or very low voltage, the ion-electron pairs simply recombine. And because scientists are such dull and boring folks, this is called the recombination region, duh. When enough voltage is applied to stop recombination, but is not high enough to cause gas amplification, the detector is in the ion chamber region, region 2, here on this graph. The two lines here represent the size of the pulse coming from the detector. The lower line is set at some arbitrary amount of charge, and the higher line is for double that amount of charge in the detector. As we can see, the pulses in the ion chamber region are proportional to the amount of charge deposited in the detector's sensitive volume. As the voltage is increased, gas amplification starts. First, rarely, because only a few of the electrons will escape a, a gas collisions long enough to gain the energy they need to cause secondary ionization. But finally, at the end of region 3, the proportional region on this graph, a significant fraction of the electrons do. Next is a region 4, the region of limited proportionality, where the height of the pulse does not necessarily correspond to the number of primary ionizations, because the secondary ionizations are beginning to swamp the original primary ionization signal. Region 5 is the Geiger-Muller region, and in this region, all of the information from the primary ionizations is lost. Whether one electron or billions of electrons were created by primary ionization, the gas amplification is so large that the primary signal is insignificant. Above this is the region called burning your anode wire in two. This should be avoided if you want to keep your detector working.